We've been told each month women shed the lining of their uterus during menstruation. For some women, this blood may be excessive and dangerous. Today I'm going to show you a procedure used to correct this called endometrial ablation here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps on giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah And if the good, I won't even worry anymore To call my care, still can kick them all out the door Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah Welcome to The Younger You. Today on the show we're talking all about a health concern specific to women. I'd like to introduce Dr. Johansson who specialises in this procedure. Good evening Dr. Johansson, how are you? I'm alright, how are you? Great. Can you explain this procedure in itself? An endometrial ablation is where we burn the lining of the uterus. It's a procedure, not a surgery, and it's either done in our office with radio frequency or hot water. Okay, so what issues and concerns does this procedure resolve? It definitely resolves a woman's heavy periods, but it can also help with the bloating and cramping associated with her menstrual cycle. Abnormal uterine bleeding can cause anemia, is that correct? Yes, it is. What is that and how do we fix it? Anemia is what most people think of as iron deficiency. It's a low blood count and what it can cause for women is they are very tired, they find it very hard to do their regular daily activities, let alone exercise. What are some of the causes of abnormal uterine bleeding? There are several common causes of uterine bleeding, which can include an abnormal thickening of the lining, polyps, which are benign fleshy growths inside the uterus, fibroids, which are typically benign muscle growths in the wall of the uterus, and sometimes we don't know why women bleed heavily. Can you fall pregnant after you have this procedure? You can get pregnant. This is not birth control. The problem is once we burn the lining of the uterus, it is not thick enough to maintain a good pregnancy most of the time. Okay, I want to talk to you about birth control options. Not the permanent ones, more of the reversible. Now let's start off with birth control pills. Birth control pills are basically a pill you have to take every day. Three weeks of active hormones and one week off, that's when you get your menstrual flow. That is probably the number one choice still for women still. today. Yeah. One that I thought was interesting was you were saying injections. Yes, there's an injection called Depo-Provera. Mm. Women get it every 12 weeks. It's progesterone only, and it's a hormone that keeps you from getting pregnant. What's the skin patch? Skin patch is basically a birth control pill put in patch form, and that you only have to change once a week. The uterine device, I've heard of that. It's well, been around for a little while. Actually, they've been around since the 70s, yeah. but they did go out of fashion for a while, and they came back uh, newer and better. There are two different options, a hormonal and a non-hormonal option. Okay. Okay, diaphragm? Diaphragm is barrier protection. It's placed half an hour before intercourse and needs to le be left in up to six hours afterwards. Okay, cervical cap? Basically similar to a diaphragm, again a barrier method of birth control. Or I was just thinking you can always get your partner to have a vasectomy. Yes you can. <laughs> it's quite Most men do not opt for that though. <laughs> exactly. Well we know that, yeah. hence why it's all on you women. Yes, unfortunately huh? it is because we're the ones that end up <laughs> pregnant otherwise. Thanks for all that information, I really appreciate it, about your temporary birth control options. But now I want to show you a few surprising facts about your birth control. Birth control can actually make a woman less sensitive to smell. Many unplanned pregnancies happen because of people being inconsistent with their birth control. You can get a shot every three months to help prevent pregnancy. There are also birth control options that last for years. The Explanon is inserted into the arm and lasts for three years, while the IUD is a T-shaped device inserted into the uterus that can last up to 12 years. There is no evidence that the pill will make you gain weight, but it can lower the risk for ovarian and uterine cancer. And ladies, after years of being in charge of staying baby free, scientists are finally working on the male birth control pill. Are there any tips out there that you can give women to find the right birth control for them? Well, unfortunately, there isn't one right method for every woman, but I think in talking with her doctor about her lifestyle habits, mm. she can come up with a good birth control that will work well for her until she is done childbearing. What's the one you, you prescribe the most? I think it's still the birth control pills. Why? I think the convenience, and women know birth control pills. Some of the other things, like the injectables, or the IUD make people more nervous. A pill they can stop one day, it's out of their system the next. Hmm. 
when I think about uh, permanent birth control, I think that's a pretty big decision. Permanent birth control to me, as defined by me, not by anybody else, would be something that would totally not allow you to have children. I have a friend going in for a hysterectomy in a couple weeks, and she can't wait. She can't wait. So there's lots of forms of, I know, uh, permanent birth control and uh, personal decision, and I'm not against it for anybody. This is a topic I feel many people don't know about. After the break, we'll be back in the studio with Dr. Johansson. Plus, we'll also get a chance to talk to Terry, a woman who has had this procedure done. It's giveaway time once again on The Younger You. You could win an Opal Lessons whitening kit from Ultradent, valued at $250. Be sure to head over to theyoungeryou.tv forward slash contest to enter. The following segment contains mature themes. Viewer discretion is advised. We're talking to Dr. Johansson about Novasure, a procedure that could help many women avoid embarrassing and often painful and heavy periods. Then we'll hear from Terry about why she wanted this procedure and what her actual options were. Welcome back. Before the break, Dr. Johansson and myself were talking about birth control options and we touched briefly on the topic of endometrial ablation. Now I'd like to find out a little bit more information so you can understand what this is all about as well. First, there are two types for this procedure, isn't there, Dr. Johansson? There are two types that we do in our office. Uh -huh. One is called the Novashore and the other is called a hydrothermal ablation. I want to talk about Novashore. Explain what it is and how it works. Novashore is basically a device we use inserted inside the uterus and it's a mesh piece that opens up to conform to the shape of the inside of your uterus. Once that mesh is in place, radio, we use radio frequency to burn the lining of the uterus. Typically this takes 60 to 90 seconds. Okay, is this one that you would use more so than the other? Typically we recommend the Novashore unless there are some other contraindications. Would you recommend medication? before this type of surgery? Sometimes we actually do recommend medication. We try something like a birth control pill okay. or other hormones to see if we can get the bleeding under control. Unfortunately, it's not successful some of the time. What's the motivation for women having this done? To be done with the heavy bleeding, that yeah. they don't have to take a medication every day to try and get it under control. Okay, health risks. Are women going to create a health risk for them down the track by having this procedure? I can't think of any health risks they have because you are not affecting women's hormones. You are not removing some organ for a woman. You are just burning the lining so that it doesn't grow and shed off every month. So is like public perception of this, what is that? I don't think people know enough about this. Mm. It's amazing to me how many, many women come into the office complaining of heavy bleeding with their periods who have no idea that there's something more they can do about it. Well, they just go with it. Don't they? Yes, women tend to suffer greatly. They before suck they, it up. <laughs> they will do something about it, yes. So I think once we inform women about them, they're like, where has this procedure been half my life type mm. response I get. Thank you, Dr. Johansson. I appreciate that. We're actually going to head over and meet one of your Novashore patients. Her name is Terry. Let's go see why she felt she needed this procedure. My name is Terry Kirkland, and I have uh, four boys. After having my last child, over the years my periods just got heavier and my periods lasted about a week and uh, the first day that my period was the heaviest, I couldn't go to the gym because I wouldn't feel comfortable that um, I wouldn't have issues. So, And it would affect work that day for sure because I'd have to take care of a lot of things. So it was very nerve wracking to me. Hey Terry, how's it going? Very good, how are you? All right, so what brings you in today? Well, I just wanted to come talk to you about what my options would be. I've been having really heavy periods. Have you tried the birth control pills yet? I have tried birth control pills. They make me very moody. Not a good option. Your family probably does not love that yeah, at all. Yeah, they're ready to get rid of me. 
For your other options, since hormonal therapy didn't work, you can consider an ablation or a hysterectomy. But I think a hysterectomy is very drastic. Before you take that final step, maybe consider one of those ablations. Endometrial ablations are where we, under anesthesia, burn the lining of the uterus. More than 90% of people have it done are much happier with their bleeding. More than 50% lose their periods altogether. I always, it's great. I always say be happy being in the 90%, but if you're in the 50% want a bonus. Any improvement would be awesome. The nice thing about it is it's a procedure, not a surgery. We do it downstairs under anesthesia. You go home within the hour. You're crampy for about eight hours afterwards. The next day you're up and around doing your normal routine. So I'm able to go back to exercising and to work the next day. Everything that you normally do. We normally give you some kind of pain medicine just in case, but a lot of people find they don't even need much more than Motrin for this procedure. The risks are pretty minimal too. It can take up to three months to see the full effects from the ablation, so give it time. Infection is very rare, but if you were to get an infection, I would treat you with antibiotics. Other than that, usually the procedure goes very well. Your family takes you home, they should spoil you rotten, and then they treat you the same the next day, okay? And does insurance cover that? Usually? Generally, your insurance covers it very well, and it's an office procedure, not a hospital-based procedure, so they tend to cover it even better than if we had done it in a hospital setting. Okay, that sounds great. Any other questions? Will that take care of my birth control? No, unfortunately, an ablation is not birth control. It's much harder to get pregnant, and it may not be a good pregnancy in that once the egg and sperm meet, it can't implant into the lining because there's hardly any lining, but you will need some kind of birth control. Okay. We've talked about basic birth control options, but what are the more permanent options for women? Stay tuned to find out. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. Check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show, read about our product of the week and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. The following segment contains mature themes. Viewer discretion is advised. When most people think of permanent birth control, they think painful surgery, weeks of downtime. Sometimes they think about vasectomies and the blokes aren't willing to take the snip. Dr. Johansson will tell us an option for our women and then our patient, Terry, will tell us why she chose to get the Eshaw procedure. Now let's talk to Dr. Johansson to find out more about this procedure. Eshaw, what is it? Eshaw is a permanent form of birth control. What's nice about it, it's a procedure, not a surgery. We do it in the office under IV sedation. Okay. Terry had the first procedure. Yes, she had the Novashore done. Why did she need to have the Eshaw as well? Because the Novashore is not birth control. Okay. You don't want to get pregnant typically after you have an Novashore or the HTA. Therefore, we offer our patients the Eshore as a permanent form of birth control. When you have the option of having both of these procedures done, what, do you need to do one before the other? Typically, we do the Eshore first, the birth control method, and then we do the ablation to stop the periods. Okay, for women, what's your other permanent birth control options? A more traditional birth control, permanent, was when we used to tie the tubes. Really, yeah. we don't tie tubes, we burn them or clamp them, but that is a surgery. Even though it is a considered a minor surgery, it's done in a facility with general anesthesia. Yeah, of course. Um, permanent health issues, if you do anything like that? Typically, there should be no health issues. You're basically just blocking the way for the egg to get down into the uterus. Mm. What are some of the benefits of Eshua? Well, you will not be on hormonal therapy. Which, oh, that's a bonus. Yeah, for someone who makes them very <laughs> moody, let me tell you. So yes, and many men appreciate the fact that they're not on any kind of hormonal therapy. Okay. It is not a surgery, so they don't have a long recovery time with it. And once they have the Eshore done and the test that confirms that the tubes are definitely closed off, they do not have to worry about birth control. How effective is it? More than 99%. There is no birth control, permanent or otherwise, that is 100% effective. Definitely not reversible. Definitely not reversible. Okay. The only way that you can get pregnant after the Eshore is to go through in vitro fertilization. Thank you, Dr. Johansson. I wanted a permanent birth control option because uh, I didn't want to do hormones anymore. I had done hormones over the many years and they just didn't work well with me. 
So I wanted something permanent. My youngest is 13, and I definitely didn't want any more children. Now, as far as birth control goes, obviously you can stay on the birth control pills, but since they made you moody, not for you. Probably more permanent solution that again is a procedure, not a surgery, because the way we used to do permanent birth control was we'd have to take you to the operating room, do a laparoscopy where we'd look with the camera through the belly button, and then you would burn or clamp or crush or tie the tubes, and the recovery from that is several days and it's under general anesthesia, and typically there's more pain. We now have the eShore, which is a really nice office-based procedure again. We do it downstairs under IV sedation and local. What I normally do is I go in through the cervix with the camera, and I look to see where the tubes come into the uterus. Once I find them, I put these little coils, they're titanium and nickel. Do you have a nickel allergy? I do not. Always check before you have this done that you don't have a nickel allergy, though. Okay. Once the coils are in place, Three months later, you get a dye study. Once the dye study confirms that your tubes are closed, you can consider yourself with permanent birth control. Your chance of getting pregnant once you have the eShore is less than 1%. So it was kind of a hard decision in the fact that you're stopping something that is a part of your life and you're moving on to a new phase of your life. So it did take me a while to decide that that's what I wanted to do. Biggest risk to the procedure is 5% of people do not have the anatomy that we can get the coils in. I will know that right away. Once I take a look inside, try and put the coils in. If they don't go in, then we will have to talk other options. But that happens very infrequently. Other than that, there's a little bit of cramping, maybe a little bit of spotting afterwards. Again, the next day you're up and around doing your normal routine, exercising work, taking care of your family. Okay, and you mentioned a dye test. What? to verify if my tubes are closed? Basically, it's kind of an x-ray. What we do is we inject dye into the uterus and see if it spills out the tubes. If it doesn't spill out the tubes, we know your tubes are closed. If it does spill out the tubes, typically we wait three more months and then more than 98% of people's tubes are closed at that point. I had my ESHO procedure and then three months later after I had it confirmed that my tubes were uh, indeed closed, then I had the Novasure procedure. I was just tired and groggy that day and a little crampy, and I haven't had one cramp since. Hey, Terry, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. So it's been like six weeks now since your last procedure, is that right? Yes. How are things going? Oh, I love it. It's the best thing I've ever done. Any Honestly. bleeding since the procedure? No, just a little bit of spotting. Oh, very good. And you can expect that spotting to even go away then at this point. If you haven't had any heavy periods or anything like that, I expect it just to improve over the next few months, okay? Great, yes. And did you do your dye study yet for your eShore? Yes, I've done that and everything's closed and it looks great. So you guys are good to go. You don't have to worry about birth control anymore. Perfect. At this point, just keep up with your annual checkups, but if you have any problems before then, let me know, okay? I would recommend it to everybody and I don't know why you wouldn't get this procedure done. We've talked about Novashore and eShore, but what about HTA? Well, find out all about it after the break. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. It's giveaway time once again on the Younger You. You could win an Opal Lessons whitening kit from Ultradent valued at $250. Be sure to head over to theyoungeryou.tv forward slash contest to enter. The following segment contains mature themes. Viewer discretion is advised. I think I've, I've had a few friends that have had the ablation uh, procedure and it's made a big difference in their life. quality of life, really. If I had cervical cancer or any kind of cancer, then yes, I would consider that. Otherwise, no, because I would want to have children and that would prohibit me from having children. I'm past that age. <laughs> We're talking to Dr. Johansson about the options women have to take control of their own bodies when it comes to that time of the month. She told us about Novashore and Eshore, but there is one more procedure we'd like to talk to you about today, and that, of course, is HTA. HTA, what is it and what does it stand for? HTA is, again, an endometrial ablation, but this time, instead of using radio frequency, we use hot water. It's hydrothermal ablation. So how is it different from Novashore? It differs in that we do it under direct visualization, meaning I can see the hot water going in and burning the lining of the uterus. And the hot water circulates for a total of 10 minutes, whereas the Novashore procedure is about 60 to 90 seconds. Okay, how would you recommend having that from one lady to another? What's the difference? I usually save 
the hydrothermal ablations for women who've had multiple cesarean sections because they have a scar there, the uterus can be thinner, don't want any burn outside the uterus. I'd also recommend it for somebody whose cavity, the inside of the uterus is not normally shaped. Okay. Or if they have fibroids, those benign muscle growths that can affect how the cavity is shaped as well. Your website says HTA is an alternative to a hysterectomy. Well, a hysterectomy is a pretty drastic surgery. That's where we actually take the uterus and cervix out to stop bleeding. There are 625,000 hysterectomies done in this country a year. Wow. Yes, so we are trying to reduce the number of major abdominal surgeries women are having by doing these simple procedures that can be done in the office. When you say simple procedure, is there pain? How long does it take to have done? Well, the nice thing about these procedures is there's no cutting involved. Okay. Typically, women are crampy for about eight hours afterwards. The next day, most of my patients are up and doing their normal routine. Really? Yes, they can run, they can go to work, they can do whatever their normal activity is. Every once in a while, somebody needs an extra day or two, but most women feel pretty normal the next day. Right. Is there any chance that you need to have this procedure done again? Interestingly, you can have the procedure done again. I have women who go several years, their bleeding is very light or gone altogether, and then mm. it starts getting heavier again. That lining starts building back up. The nice thing about this procedure is you can do it again. FDA approved? It is FDA approved. Wow. Why does the lining build up again? In theory, we're always hoping we burn the whole layer that makes the lining build. In practicality, it's almost impossible to burn every cell that will form the layer of again. So that's why we need to reburn. Now, you say you can be up and about the next day. Yes. Is the recovery really that quick? Like, you could be back swimming, you could be out back at the gym. Okay, you can't swim. Okay. Okay. But short of swimming, you can be at the gym, you can go to work, you can take care of your children, you can drive as long as you're not taking narcotic pain meds. Okay. Will you continue to bleed after this procedure, or does it just lessen? Here's the thing, it can take up to three months to see the full effects. I always tell women, more than 90% of women will be happier with their bleeding. About 50% or so lose their periods altogether. So I have women who have seven heavy days of bleeding go down to two days of light spotting. I have women who come in who don't bleed again for years to come. We've been doing this procedure more than 10 years now. Sitting here listening to you as a bloke, it doesn't trick your body into menopause though, does it? No, it does not affect your hormones at all. You will go through menopause when your body is set to go through menopause. Okay. Dr. Johansson, you know about this. You've been through it yourself. You've actually had the Novashore done. I had my Novashore done four years ago, and I think that's why I'm such a strong believer in it now. I was on birth control pills from the time I was 16 till I had my procedure done because I had such heavy bleeding. Had the Novashore done, I was crampy for the eight hours, woke up the next morning, ran my normal run, and worked a 12-hour day. And since then, my periods have been very, very light. And when, when you tell your patients that, do they go, thank goodness, I, think I get it. Better that their doctor has actually been through this, they know, they understand what they're going through, and that there is something that really does work. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And I appreciate you educating me as well, when I work with a bunch of women all day. I need to know these things. Now you can be more sympathetic no, to I, these women, okay? I, I, well, I am pretty sympathetic already. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Johansson. I truly appreciate all this great information. Endometrial ablation is a great option for women who are suffering from excessive blood flow during menstruation. For more information about the show, please visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Coming up next week, we'll be talking all about the thyroid with Dr. Red and learning about a disorder called Hashimoto's. The Younger You Set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.